Dr. Gilbert, I'm often asked in the clinic when patients are diagnosed with chronic pancreatitis, what type of food should they avoid? What type of beverage should they take? So I just want to ask you, what's your advice as far as diet for patients with chronic pancreatitis? I think that's a very good question, and that's something that we try to cover in every visit that we have with the patients. I also think that's why it's so important to have a nutritionist work with you as part of the team in this multidisciplinary approach of the patient with chronic pancreatitis with a chronic condition, a chronic disease. So when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to what can I eat, you know, we always make it very, very clear. Yes, you can have some amount you know, of fat in the food that's important for organ function, but it has to be, in general, a low-fat diet. Why low fat? Low fat, it's not only good for your pancreas, it's good for the rest of your body, particularly the heart, but low fat diet is important because fat is the stronger stimuli for pancreatic function. So the least we stimulate pancreatic secretion, in theory, the least pain you're gonna have. Or we know, just putting in different words, that when you eat a lot of fat, you're putting your pancreas to work to the max. So this may trigger pain. So low-fat diet, it's very important. And again, working in a multidisciplinary approach, having a nutritionist in the team, having the patient see a nutritionist, it's of great help. A second issue that we like to stress, it's how important it's the pancreas, it's fluids when it comes to the pancreas. Again, the pancreas likes to be surrounded by water, by fluids. So we tell the patients in general to be well hydrated at all times. Be very careful when you're traveling. High altitudes actually may get you dehydrated relatively easy. You know, be careful with coffee. It's not that you cannot drink it, but coffee, even though it's fluid, you know, it's gonna make you urinate. So you may get dehydrated with this, so you have to be careful what you call well hydrated. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about water, we're talking about juices, and so. So hydration, low fat, extremely important. I personally like to give the patients also antioxidants in the forms of vitamins. The data uh, that it's published in the medical literature, it's a little bit difficult to understand. You have some showing that it has a very good effect, some other showing studies that are well done studies showing that the effect is not as good. Mm -hmm. I tend to tell my patients, even though this is controversial because of the lack of solid data, to take multivitamins that have a lot of the antioxidants in them. If it doesn't do any good, it won't do any harm. But I like to do the combination of all of the above and, uh, and again, closely follow up these patients, make sure that they're doing well. Mm -hmm. And I would agree, I think the low fat, typically less than 20 grams a day is very important in the hydration. The other thing I tell my patients is to try to eat small, frequent meals. Yeah. So the pancreas gets stimulated not only by what you eat, but I think the volume of what you eat. So if you have one massive meal a day, that puts a lot of stress, I think, on the pancreas. So we like to the patients to have small, frequent meals throughout the day as opposed to one or two very large meals to kind of do everything that your mother told you not to do, uh, which is pick at your food throughout the day because that can really help eliminate that stress, quote unquote, on, on the pancreas in addition to the, to the um, things that you had mentioned. That's a very good point, I agree.